Leading the 2022 playoffs in plus minus, Jimmy Butler is resembling the best talent in the Eastern Conference Finals. Five Heat players in total scored in double figures. The absences of Smart and Horford plagued a Celtic team that looked worn down from the previous series. Blitzing the Celtics to start the second half, Miami outscored Tatum, Brown, and company 22-2 to begin the third quarter. The Seas didn't get totally blown out after that, but with a massive impact player in Al Horford having just entered health and safety, that could be detrimental. Still, that's not too much of an excuse, considering the Heat are without Kyle Lowry. But Jimmy G, Bam Bam, Boy Wonder, surrounded by some elite role players, have made up for the greatest Raptor of all time, being on the DL. Here's how the Miami Heat just made a statement. Before continuing, just 10.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and the channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLoveHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The defensive backbone Bam Adebayo and shockingly Gabe Vincent combined to block seven shots. The underrated shooting guard Vincent combined with Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, Victor Oladipo, and P.J. Tucker for 10 three-pointers made, but making the most well-rounded impact in Game 1 was Jimmy Butler. The Heat's face of the franchise dropped a ludicrous 41 points, 5 assists, 9 rebounds, 4 steals, and 3 blocks. No one in playoff history had previously recorded those numbers since 1974, according to StatMuse. Butler was a game-high plus 25, he made 12 of his 19 attempts from the field, and got to the line to drain 17 of his 18 free throws, becoming the first player in the last 10 years with multiple 40-point playoff games without making a three-pointer. Jimmy's beastliness was the main factor leading South Beach to a 22-2 avalanche. We also have to give credit to Eric Spolstra's defensive strategy to help limit Boston's elite duo of the Jays. Spo put Jimmy Butler on Tatum and Brown sparingly, but I thought he was on the duo just enough to have an impact. In general, when attempting to stop the most elite NBA players, I think it's crucial that a coach mixes up his looks defensively, and that's what Miami's man in charge did. When Jimmy guarded Tatum, Jason went 2 for 6 from the field, and when Butler guarded Brown, Jalen went 0 for 5. Additionally, as the primary defender, Jimmy held the Celtics to just 4 for 13 shooting. Real superstars raise their games to a whole new caliber when the intensity reaches its peak. And a fact that proves Butler's mentality and playing style elevates when his city needs him most is the fact that he had zero 40-point games during the regular season, and he's had five so far in the playoffs. As a Toronto fan, what Jimmy G's doing right now gives me flashbacks of watching Kawhi carry my Raptors to a championship. Looking at the numbers between Kawhi's 2019 run and Jimmy's 2022 run up to this point, and that comparison becomes increasingly similar. Another trait Butler has in common with Kawhi is how physically built to the core and how mentally strong he is, not to mention how smooth Jimmy's mid-range game is. Making headlines, Butler had this to say after Game 1, I like physicality, I want to run into people and see who falls down first. I want to see who quits first, end quote. Since the infamous bench scuffle between Jimmy, Spo, and Haslam, the Heat have the best record in the NBA at 15-6, despite their main ball handler Kyle Lowry missing most of those games. That just goes to show how this Heat team's made up for the loss of their top players all throughout this 2021-22 campaign. P.J. Tucker spoke on Jimmy Butler's dedication after Game 1, saying, He's a pro, he really is. He does everything he needs to do to be able to be a great player. I see it every day. When you see him come out and have games like he's having, it makes sense. End quote. If you're a Heat fan, boding well for you is the fact that, since Spolstra's been the head coach, the Heat have won 15 series and lost just two after winning the opening game. The Heat now have a plus 93 margin in the third quarters of this year's playoff games, and a plus 117 all in all, defeating opponents by an average margin of 9.8 points per night, according to SB Nation. While history is trending in their direction, you can't dismiss that Boston won three of the four quarters on Tuesday. Boston was the far superior team in the first half, and they also changed the momentum to close out the game in the fourth, nearly coming back to tie it. Having said that, the third quarter mauling also displays how Miami needs just a tiny window within the 48 minutes of a game to blitz their opponent 
and leaning on their go-to guy, Coach Ime Udoka had no answer for Butler in Game 1. Jimmy shot 4 for 6 against Brown, 2 for 5 against Tatum, 2 for 4 against Pritchard, and he went a perfect 2 for 2 against Grant Williams. Man oh man does Boston need Marcus Smart back. Luckily, he's probable for Game 2. According to NBA.com, the Heat's opponents only make 34.3% of their shots in isolation through the first 12 playoff games. If Tatum can dismantle Spolstra's scheme, that would be extremely impressive, and JT certainly has the star power to do that. Tatum also has to make much better passing reads because Miami's fully willing to leave guys like Grant Williams open for just a split second and force Tatum to give up the ball. Jason owned up to how his playmaking needs to be better than it was in Game 1, saying afterwards, I'll take the blame for that, I've got to lead better, I've got to play better, especially in those moments, end quote. Just eight players suited up for Boston in Game 1, including the rarely used sophomore Aaron Nesmith. No Horford meant Daniel Tice saw some run too. It goes without saying that this series is just getting started, and Miami going up 2-0 on Thursday is going to be extremely difficult. With that said, every time Miami faces adversity, whether it's all their injuries to starters throughout the year, and even the first half of Game 1 against Boston, the Heat have responded by coming back as a different type of force. Expect the Celtics to hit back with an overhand right, but count on the stingy, athletic, and deeply talented Heat, led by Jimmy G, to be ready for battle. Who wins this series in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says, I think that Dallas has a very good chance to make the NBA Finals. My first reason is because of how good Luke has been. Even when he has an off night shooting, he can affect the game in many other ways. In my opinion, he's the best scorer, playmaker, and even rebounder in this upcoming series. The Warriors are not a bad rebounding team, but they have to rebound as a team to get them. This gives plenty of extra possessions. I think Luka will thrive off offensive boards, even his own putbacks. Next up, I don't think anybody on the Warriors can shut down Luka, as he's the best player in this series. I see the Warriors putting someone like Clay, Wiggins, or even Draymond, or a combination of all of them on Luka. Pause to read the rest of Devin's amazing answer. Appreciate every take. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.